SRV6 microSeed host and cloud networking demo shown at MPLS SRV6 and AI conference in Paris 2025, powered by Cisco and Cilium CNI. SRV6 enabled transport network has LGVPN services defined on top. There are two P devices at the edge of SRV6 domain, P1 and P2, both connecting the customer edge devices in the VRF red and green. PE nodes establish BGP neighborship with the route reflector over which VPNv4 address family is exchanged to advertise the CE subnets. The goal of this demonstration is to show how a SRV6 domain can be extended from the transport network across the data center network up to the hosts, up to the servers where a Kubernetes cluster is deployed with Cilium CNI. The data center nodes called here Tor, Spine 1 and Spine 2 are working as IPv6 routers. The Kubernetes nodes behave like uh, PE devices. They have SRV6 locator assigned. They perform SRV6 encapsulation and decapsulation operation. They form BGP session towards the route reflector in this demo via the Tor, where the pod cider of the Kubernetes cluster is advertised in the context of RED or green VRF. However, the Kubernetes nodes do not support ISIS, and they do have a SRV6 locator assigned that needs to be known routing-wise by the rest of the network. The SRV6 locator advertisement is done in two steps. In the data center domain, we have BGP sessions hop by hop starting from the Kubernetes nodes, where over IPv6 Unicast address family, SRV6 locator is advertised. And then at the spine level, we have BGP to ISIS redistribution, so all the network knows how to reach SRV6 locator in Kube cluster. Once the control plane is fully established, we will have a VRF created on the Kube cluster, and the applications will run in the context of the VRFs. When the VRFs are created, the pod cider is BGP before advertised, BGP VPN before address family advertised by the cube cluster node via route reflector to the PE nodes. In the demo, I will use the console uh, access to the Tor device, to the PE device, and I will also use a custom UI in order to check and push some configurations to Kubernetes cluster. Let's start with the Tor. Right now, the Tor has only BGP sessions towards the spines. It does not have any session established towards the cube cluster. When we check the VRF red route table on the PE node, it is configured, its state has the two routes to the local CE and the BGP learned uh, route to the remote P, to the remote CE, to the network behind the remote CE. If we check the details of that BGP advertised network, we shall see that the operate that forwarding to that network is done over SRV6. So the PE2 will perform SRV6 encapsulation operation using this seed list, the single member of the seed list. So it will be a destination V6 address that can be seen as a locator of the remote PE plus function assigned locally at the remote PE and advertised using BGP VPNv4 address family. Let's right now start the configuration. 
The first step is to configure PGP on the Cube Cluster node. The configuration is defined in YAML file and uses Cilium specific isovalent BGP cluster configs CRD, in which it is defined on which node the BGP has to be formed, what's the local ASN, remote ASN, and what's the peering IP address. Then for such peering, it's also defined what address families are allowed. Here we have IPv6 unique as address family for SRV6 locator and VPNV4 address family for the VRFs. When I hit create button, the Kubernetes API is used to send the request to Kubernetes cluster, which is installed with Cilium as CNI. <clears throat> BGP sessions should become established as long as they are obviously configured on the other end, which is the Tor in the demo setup. It's worth highlighting that there is nothing is advertised on IPv6 yet because there is no SRV6 locator. And also there is nothing advertised on VPNv4 yet because there is no VRF configured on Kubernetes cluster. We can verify the state of the neighborship also on the Tor by checking the neighborships and we see that we have four new neighborships just established. Nothing is changed yet on the from the PE perspective. Both the route table and the global route table as well as the VRF red, red table remain the same. The next step is to configure the SRV6 locator on the cube cluster. It is done again using the custom uh, isovalent SRV6 locator pool CRD that defines the pool of the prefix or the pool of, of locators for a cluster. So we are providing here, defining here a pool, and we say that from this pool we need to allocate slash 48 with the given structure with the microseed behavior. When I hit create, Kubernetes API is used to send that request to Cube Cluster. And Cilium CNI is assigning this uh, SRV6 locators per node from the defined pool. Since in the previous step, I have enabled BGP to advertise uh, SRV6 locator, we right now see that each node is advertising one subnet, which is the SRV6 locator assigned for that node. If we check that on the PE device by checking show route table, we should expect to see this locator in the route table. Why? Because it was BGP advertised to the Tor, and then it was re-advertised, re redistributed to ISIS on the spine nodes. And we have four entries. The next step is to create the VRF. It will be done in the following way from the so-called customer facing portal because this step only touches the Kubernetes. Everything on the, between the Kubernetes and the network fabric is established. So we can simply interact with Kubernetes only right now, just to define an, a, a VRF in, in Kube cluster. When I hit the submit button, specific YAML is sent, which will mainly do, uh, will, which will mainly provide the isovalent VRF construct that defines the VRF inside the Kube cluster, which means that for that VRF, a specific function will be assigned in the locator assigned per node. Every node has its own pod cider. Every node has its own locator. Function has been assigned per node, per locator, per VRF, and the entire seat along with the pod cider will be BGP VPN before advertised. And that's what we can verify going again to PE2. This time we check the VRF red table. And we see four new entries. Each entry corresponds with the pod cider of the node. If we would check the details of this entry, we shall see that the information, forwarding information, is defining that the PE should encapsulate the packet towards that subnet with SRV6 using the seed list that contains a single seed, which consists of locator and the function that has been assigned in the cube cluster. So we have end-to-end -end SRV6 native connectivity 
no protocol translation, no data stitching between the uh, PE device and the server where the application will be running. So finally, let's start the application. I will select in the customer facing portal part of the custom GUI set of applications. One of them is, a, is checking the connectivity using the TWAMP agent that will be deployed as a pod in the Cube cluster, will be marked as belonging to Red VRF, and it will send the data to the TWAMP responders or reflectors, which are pre deployed in the, in the network topology behind the CE11 and CE12. When the traffic is responded, the then certain logging is made via Telegraph, InfluxDB that can be visualized in Grafana. So when I access Grafana, which is that just a few seconds ago, the traffic has started because I have created the TWAMP application in the in the pod in the Red VRF that is that is sending traffic and receiving traffic from the uh, C TWAMP responders in Red VRF. That confirms that the COVID connectivity is in place. To wrap things up, what we are achieving here is the fully flexible way of us attaching the Kubernetes cluster with Cilium CNI to SRV6 fabric directly using no protocol translation and no data stitching. The worker nodes behave like a P devices and we can, we can launch and isolate the applications within the cluster for the L3 PNVRF across SRV6 fabric.